I want to talk about a deal we just did. We made $20,000 by sending a text. Okay, maybe a little bit more than a text, but you guys get it. We sent a text message asking if they were interested in selling their house. They said yes, and we closed the deal and we made $20,000. So let me explain how we did it. We made $20,000 by sending a text message. How did I do it? I'll show you guys. So if you guys watch the wholesaling series below, this video exactly, um, there was a text message that we sent and we asked the homeowner if he was interested in selling and this one said yes. So he has a four unit. Um, they're separately deeded, which means every two fam it's two family and a two family. So they're four in total, but two and two. So two separate properties, two separate contracts, two separate assignment agreements. So I'll show you guys exactly what we did. We got it under contract for 130 for each one. So 130, 130, and we assigned them for 140 and 140. I'll show you guys the purchase and sales and the assignment agreement here. This is our purchase and sales agreement, 41 Virginia. Um, we have it under contract for 130,000. We paid a thousand refundable deposit. Um, let's scroll back so we can see that it was actually signed. And here we go. Signed by the homeowner. Same thing for the other one. This is 43 Virginia, 130,000. And then also signed by the homeowner. Now let's go to our assignment agreement. Um, 43 Virginia uh, 140,000 is the assignable price and we got a 5,000 deposit and this is signed as well let's go to sign so once the owner signs the purchase and sales agreement and once our investor our end buyer signs the assignment agreement what do we do we send both contracts to title um, and title basically handles the rest for us. They're going to ask information from the end buyer. They're going to ask information from the seller. They're going to put you in the email chain so you see what's going on, but they don't need anything else from you, basically. Um, and once title is clear and everything is set, we close, we make our assignment fee. And for this property, we made 10000 for each one. So $20,000. So let's go a little bit more in detail on how this deal happened. If you guys watched the last video, you know we did this wholesaling series where we got a list off of Fiverr.com. The link is in my bio if you want 10% off. But we pulled a list, a vacant list of properties in a specific area, and we got this hit. Surprisingly, this property wasn't vacant. So was it a wrong number? Was that an accident? Maybe it was fake. But we did get a homeowner that was interested in selling a property. It was four units, separately deeded, two family, two family. Um, and we got it locked up. So how did it start? We sent him a text We asked him if he was interested in selling the property and he replied with yes I have the screenshots here We can actually read the full conversation because this property was a little bit different because he did have code violations that we had to work around uh, So first off the first text was are you interested in selling? He said yes, I have thought about selling it uh, and I said any major Repairs that would be needed the general condition. He asked me to give him a call so during the call, I really just ask a little bit more about the information on the property, um, bedroom, bathroom for each unit. How are the tenants paying? Are they paying tenants? Are they leased? Are they month to month? Just all the information that I would need that I know an investor is going to eventually ask. In terms for this property, he his reason for selling it was that he was not cut out to be a landlord. This was his first property that he purchased as an investor. It just didn't work for him. He lived three hours away. It just wasn't the best fit for him and he needed it gone. So he was a very, very motivated seller. And it was a great property four units for we got it for 260 amazing deal after that i asked for his email so i can send him a purchase and sales agreement and he also was going to send me all the code violations that he had on the property so these were the code violations so as you guys can see it needed a laundry list of upgrades to meet code which is good for us because now we have a lot more room to negotiate on the price um but after this i kind of asked him in terms of seller financing and subject to uh, so if he had purchased the property in cash, I would be able to ask him to either become the bank and give him payments on the home, or if he didn't own the home and he had a mortgage payment, I would take over his mortgage payments. So these are seller financing, creative financing, as they say, for me to personally own the home rather than either buying it in cash, having to go get a lender, having to go get a mortgage, whatever the case may be. But for this, he said no, he wanted a cash offer, he wanted to take the equity off the home to get in business with a friend in Philly, which is fine. Um, another good thing is always have that option for your investors too. It's a, a great asset to use like for your cash buyer, like, oh, we can also provide seller financing. Um, but it wasn't the case for this one. 
So after we finished talking about the general condition, the code violations, all the information that I needed in order to run the numbers, I had to ask him how much did he want for the property. Uh, if it was too high, then all of this would have been a waste. But for him, he purchased the property last year. He purchased it for $300,000, 150, 150, because there were two units. Um, and I asked him, like, there's code violations on the property. You're going to have to hit a loss because you didn't get them finished. You didn't fix them up. And a lot of your tenants are paying lower than market value rents. And so he was like, well, what's your offer? I aimed low and I gave him 240 for both of them. So I believe 120, 120. And he was like, he can't do it. It was too low. He's taking a substantial loss and he needs at least like 275 for the partnership that he was doing in Philly. And so I was like, what if I meet you in the middle at 250? And he said, let me call you back the next day. So I let him sit on it which thinking about it now is not the best thing to do because once you hang up on them, it's very hard to get a hold of them the next day or the next day. Like I've seen it in properties now. Like once they say, oh, I'll talk to you tomorrow, they just go at my, they ghost you. Uh, but this one, he called back and he said, no, I can't do it. And I was like, okay, how about we do 260? We meet in the middle. I give you 130 and 130 for both of them. And he was like, you know what? Let me, give me until this afternoon, I'm at work. And I was like, okay. And he called me back. And he's like, you know what? Let's do it. I sent him the purchase and sales agreement to his email. He signs it that same minute, which is great because a lot of the times these sellers take a whole nother two days to read the contract and actually sign it. So he was pretty fast into signing. So once I had the contract signed, now it was time for me to market the property. Um, and this is where it became fun. And this is where it became really easy compared to all the other properties I've done. So when it came to actually sending it to my end buyers, I was like, well, now I got to post it on Facebook, Craigslist, Bigger Pocket, Connected Investor, uh, send it to my email list. But first thing I did was actually send it to an investor that I knew was killing it down there. Uh, he loved the area. He was buying properties left and right. And I said, what's the harm in sending it to him first, figuring out if he wants it, and then doing the whole marketing of, of finding the end buyer. So I sent it to this end buyer and he ended up wanting it. He said, I'll buy it sight unseen. I will send the contract right now. I will pay the deposit right now. You don't have to market it. You don't have to do anything. And for me, I'm like blown away. So I've worked with this investor before. So I know they're reliable. I know when they say they're going to do it, they're going to do it. But it's still crazy when you're getting an offer the minute you sign the contract. And the best part about this is when you're working with tenant occupied properties and people have to go see it, you're working with four other people's schedules, your end buyer schedule, your own schedule. So this was great. The fact that I didn't even have to go down there to take pictures of the property to be able to email blast it. The fact that I didn't have to really work on any of the tenant's schedule, work on the owner's schedule. I didn't have to drive three hours down there. Um, it was great. And so I sent him the assignment agreement. He signed it right then and there. 5000 non-refundable deposit. So in case he was fooling around or playing me, um, he'd lose his deposit basically. And then I just resend it to my email list and find another buyer. So. Even if a if an end buyer ends up screwing around and they pay the deposit, I make five thousand dollars no matter what. So even if I don't find an end buyer at the end of the day, I still made five thousand dollars here. I can cancel the contract here. So this isn't something that you would get in every single deal. Um, I guess this proves like the benefit of having connections with investors and knowing what they want and knowing their numbers um, and being able to have that rapport with them. But in terms of if it wasn't for this investor, I would have to go down there and take pictures or send somebody down there to take pictures. Um, send an email blast, send a post it on Facebook, post it on Craigslist, Connected Investor, Bigger Pockets, all these softwares. And then I'd have people messaging me almost every single day asking that they want to go see the property or they want more information. So then I have to work around the tenant's schedule, my schedule, the homeowner's schedule, the investor's schedule, have everyone meet down there. Um, so I'm really glad that this investor was able to close it because with tenant occupied properties, showings are a lot harder than vacant ones. That's why we went with a vacant list for Fiverr, but we got lucky with a rented four unit. Um, but I'm not complaining on this one. So afterwards, it was time to kind of send the purchase and sales agreement and the assignment agreement to title, uh, which is usually the easy part. I know a lot of people don't understand what happened in the title, but you can just email them the, or you can go down there and you can give them the purchase sales agreement, assignment agreement, and let them know that you're doing assignment contract. Um, and they typically do handle the rest. Like I, when I say they handle the rest, they really do. They put an email chain of the homeowner, the end buyer and yourself, and you can see everything that they're talking about. So for this one in specific, they were asking about the leases, they were asking about COs, and this is something that the investor would have to do. 
and something that the homeowner will provide. So me, I'm just watching the emails and as they, they figure out what they have to do, as soon as title was clear, we were set to close um, and you don't have to be there as a wholesaler at the closing table, just the homeowner and the end buyer. Um, and after they were able to close, we made $20,000. Well, 10,000 on this deal, 10,000 on this deal. We made 20,000 in total. You know, I know I tried to show this video as easy as possible, but you guys do remember we had to send over 300 text messages. Um, and this was one of the deals that we got after 300 text messages. So it's all a numbers game. The more people you contact, the more people you call, you text, the better chances of getting a yes. Once you have that yes, it's just a matter of getting the information, running the numbers and getting it signed. Once you have it on their contract, finding the end buyer is the easy part. Um, investors are out there. You just have to find a good deal. That's where your actual job comes into place. Find a good off market property, find a good end buyer and you're set to close. So we made $20,000 with one text message um, and let's continue to do more. If you guys have any questions, comment below. All the descriptions on the contracts, the little breakdown is on in my bio about wholesaling. Thank you guys. See you next time.